for reasons that are too numerous to, to uh, talk about here on this program. I mean, first and foremost, there is a culture in American policing where this sort of behavior is not only okay, it's encouraged, where you heard the, the lawyer refer to it as an analogy as a pack of wolves. It's very easy to see how that can, can take place because officers tend to have an us versus them mentality. It's one for all and all for one. And when one officer uh, starts in on a suspect, it's not unusual for other officers to join in. And it's rare for an officer to say, hold up, this is too much, stop and do something to intervene in the deaths of uh, a, a civilian. Uh, the, the heartbreaking thing here is that uh, the, the issue has been framed as a black versus white issue, but the issue is much broader than that. We have an issue of policing in America that's not been reined in. There are no national standards. There's no national uh, requirements to become an officer. Each department is, is framed individually. And police unions and police foundations are very powerful in keeping officers accused of misconduct on the job. As a matter of fact, they, they in some cases, in some instances here in D.C., the police chief is saying that he's his hands are tied. He's wanted to fire officers who he knows are guilty of misconduct, but he can't do it because he knows he'd have a strong union case on his hands that would filter down to the rank and file. There'd be uh, disgruntlement. So the officers with bad conduct, they remain on the force, or if they do by some miracle get fired, they move to another force where nobody knows their name or their history, and they get hired, and the pattern repeats itself all over again.